Hello friends, welcome to this my new video and topic is effect of load on force of contraction. In my previous lectures, we have already discussed about the number of stimuli and strength of the stimuli and effect of temperature on force of contraction. And today I discuss about the effect of load on force of contraction. So load acting on the muscle is of two types after load and free load. So what is the after load? After load is the load that acts on the muscle after the beginning of the muscular contraction. For example is lifting of any object from the ground and the load acts on the muscle of the arm only after lifting the object off the ground. So only after beginning of the muscular contraction. Then free load is the load which acts on the muscle freely even before the onset of the contraction of the muscle and it is otherwise also known as fore load. Example of the free load is filling water from the tap by holding the bucket in the hand. Free load versus after load. Free load is more beneficial since the force of the contraction and work done by the muscle are greater in the free loaded condition than in the after loaded condition. Why it is so in the free loaded condition? Because in the free loaded condition the muscle fibers are stretched and the initial length of the muscle fiber is increased and it facilitates the force of contraction and this is in accordance with Frank Starling's law. Then what is the Frank Starling's law? This law states that the force of the contraction is directly proportional to the initial length of the muscle fiber within the physiological limits. So this is the figure of after load and free load. This one is a after load and this one is a free load. So this is a load of 10 gram then 20 and 30. So PS means point of stimulus. In the free loaded condition the force of the contraction is greater than in the after loaded condition with the same weight. So Frank Starling's law that can be proved by using a muscle now preparation of the frog. First one simple muscle curve is recorded with 10 gram weight in after loaded condition of the muscle. Then many contractions are recorded by increasing the weight every time until the muscle fails to lift the weight or till the cow becomes almost flat near the baseline. And the work done by the muscle is calculated for every weight. Effect of increasing the weight in after loaded condition are force of the contraction decreases gradually, latent period prolonge and contraction and relaxation period shorten. Afterward, the muscle in after loaded condition is brought to the free loaded condition and stimulated. Now the muscle contracts and the curve is recorded and again the work done by the muscle is calculated. Work done in the free loaded condition is more than in the after loaded condition. This proves Frank Starling's law. The force of the contraction is directly proportional to the initial length of the muscle fiber. So work done by the muscle calculated by the formula work done is equal to W multiplied by small h where W is weight lifted by the muscle in h height up to which the weight is lifted. So this one is a weight and this h ok. So this is a height height up to which the weight is lifted and height is determined by the formula 
is equal height is equal to small l multiply by h divided divided by l and this formula is derived as follow l divided by l is equal to h divided by h so this formula is height is equal to l multiplied by h divided by l this is a l and this one is a height and this one is a small h this one is a weight and this is a l this is a gastrocnemius now muscle preparation and here the weight is applied here the l capital l length between fulcrum and writing point and small l length between the fulcrum and point where the weight is added h is equal to means height height of the cow and small h is height up to which the weight is lifted so work done by the muscle is w multiply by l multiplied by h divided by a gram per gram centimeter so work done is expressed as ergs or gram centimeter then optimum load optimum load is the load at which the work done by the muscle is maximum now length tension relationship tension or force that is developed in the muscle during the resting condition and also during the contraction varies with the length of the muscle fiber tension developed in the muscle during the resting condition that is known as passive tension and tension developed in the muscle during the isometric contraction means length of the muscle fiber remains same but tension changed so tension developed in the muscle during the isometric contraction that is known as total tension and in resting condition the tension developed that is known as passive tension then active tension so difference between the passive tension and total tension at a particular length of the muscle fiber is known as active tension and active tension is considered as the real tension that is generated in the muscle during the contractile process and it can be determined by the length tension curve now length tension curve is the curve that determines the relationship between the length of the muscle fiber and the tension developed by the muscle and it is also known as length force curve so this is the total tension this is a passive tension and that is a active tension tension is plotted on vertically and muscle length in centimeters that are plotted in horizontally the curve is obtained by using frog's gastrocnemius cytic now preparation muscle is attached to the micrometer on one end and to a force transducer on the other end muscle is not allowed to shorten because of its attachment on both the ends a micrometer is used to set the length of the muscle fiber then force transducer is connected to polygraph polygraph is used to measure the tension developed by the muscle during the isometric contraction so here length between the fulcrum and writing point okay this is the writing point and this is a fulcrum and small l length between fulcrum and point where the weight is added so here the weight is added and this is a small l and uh, capital l that is a height of cow this is the obtained cow and this is the capital h is a height of cow and that is a ab and small h height up to which the weight is lifted and w is weight to begin with the minimum length of the muscle is set by using micrometer the passive tension is determined by force transducer 
and then the muscle is stimulated and the total tension is determined. Now from these two values the active tension is calculated. Then the length of the muscle is increased gradually. At every length both passive tension and total tension are determined followed by the calculation of the active tension. All the values of the active tension at the different lengths, lengths are plotted to obtain the length tension curve. From this curve the resting length is determined. Now what is the resting length? Resting length is the length of the muscle at which the active tension is maximum. Active tension is proportional to the length of the muscle up to the resting length. Beyond the resting length active tension decreases. Tension versus overlap of the myofilaments. So length tension relationship is explained on the basis of the sliding of the actin filaments over the myosin filaments during the muscular contraction. The active tension is proportional to the overlap between the actin and myosin filaments in the sarcomere and the number of the cross bridges that is formed between the actin and myosin filaments. When the length of the muscle is less than the resting length, there is an increase in the overlap between actin and myosin filament and the number of the cross bridges. The active tension gradually increases up to resting length. Now during stretching of the muscle beyond the resting length, there is a reduction in the overlap between the actin and myosin filament and the number of the cross bridges and the active tension starts declining beyond the resting length. Then refractory period. Refractory period is the period at which the muscle does not show any response to a stimulus and it is because already one action potential is in progress in the muscle during this period. The muscle is unexcitable to further stimulation until it is repolarized. Refractory period is of two types absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. Absolute refractory period is the period during which the muscle does not show any response at all, whatever may be the strength of stimulus. Relative refractory period is the period during which the muscle shows some response if the strength of the stimulus increase to maximum. Refractory period in skeletal muscle. In skeletal muscle whole of the latent period is refractory period. The absolute refractory period falls during the first half of the latent period. Duration is 0 0.005 second and relative refractory period extends during the second half of the latent period. 0 0.005 second is duration. So totally it is about 0 0.01 second. Refractory period in cardiac muscle. In cardiac muscle the absolute refractory period extends throughout the contraction period and duration is about 0.27 second. And the relative refractory period extends during the first half of the relaxation period duration which is about 0.26 second. So total it is about 0.53 53 seconds. So the refractory period in the cardiac muscle is very long as compared to that of the skeletal muscle. Significance of the long refractory period in cardiac muscle. Because of the long refractory period the cardiac muscle does not show fatigue, complete summation of contraction and tetanus. Thank you.